Hello. I feel like I'm constantly wearing this jacket in my videos. You guys are gonna think that I don't have any clothes. The thing is, I do have clothes, but I always wear the same. Especially when I'm working from home. Like, I rotate three different pairs of sweatpants. And that's it. Anyway, you guys are probably wondering why I'm in bed. And the truth is, I'm procrastinating right now. Oftentimes, before I film my videos, I think about the fact that my coworkers probably watch my videos and it kind of makes me cringe. There's something to be said about working a corporate job and creating content on the internet at the same time. Maybe they think that coding is not enough for me. Speaking of coding, welcome to today's video. As you can see from the title, today we are unleashing our creativity together and we are giving personalities and outfits to iconic programming languages. So in this video, my job is to show you the type of personality that I would give to these programming languages. And your job is to let me know in the comments how accurate these are and what you would change. And because I also like to educate you guys in my videos, you will also get a history lesson about each programming language. I entertain, I educate. I'm the whole package. If you are new to the channel, welcome! I'm Jackie and I'm a software engineer at Prime Video and I'm based in London and I also enjoy creating fun videos on the internet. So without further ado, let's get started. So first up, we have Python. Python is very cool and very laid back, but he's also kind of lazy in a way because he just always borrows everything from everyone else and he never really does anything original. So this is a bit annoying, but people still enjoy hanging out with him and spending time with him, which is fine. Python also gives us this vibe that he kind of peaked in high school. Now, for those of you wondering, Python is a high-level, dynamically typed programming language. It was first released in 1991 as Python version 0.9.0, if I'm not mistaken. Python supports object-oriented, functional programming, and structured programming. And it was developed mostly by Guido van Rossum at CWI, which is a research institute in the Netherlands. Python has become very popular because it has a quite simple syntax, and it is very flexible and can be used for multiple types of programming. Nowadays, it's mostly used for data science and for web development. Next up, we have Java. Java is a professor, a retired professor. She's conservative, she's very chic, but she's a little bit judgmental. Java likes her routines and her little patterns and she insists that you use them too. Otherwise, she will think that you're trash. Java is very old school, very wise, very smart, has lots of experience, but she doesn't like change very much, so she's a little bit stuck in the past. Java itself is a high-level, object-oriented programming language. Once compiled, the code can run on any device that supports Java, which usually happens through Java virtual machines. Java was created in 1995 by James Goslin at Sun Microsystems. Coincidentally, that's the year that I was born in. I don't know how I feel about that. And a fun fact is that initially it was supposed to be called Oak because Goslin had an oak tree in front of his office. But then he changed his mind and called it Java because of the coffee. You guessed it right, I'm C++. C++ is a self-proclaimed programming god. C++ is very smart, very wise, and very business savvy as well. But his problem is that his attention is always scattered across a million different ideas. He patents all of his inventions, which were many, and this is how he made his money. His father, C, is also very famous, but he's broke, contrary to C++. C++ also likes to run very fast. He's a sprinter. He's also kind of very good looking. Now, C++ was created in 1985 by a Danish programmer, and it is an extension of the C programming language. People say that nowadays C++ can support object-oriented, structured, and even functional programming, although there is some debate around this topic. It was designed for systems programming and for embedded software due to its flexibility, its efficiency, and its performance. Now, there's one thing, and one thing only, that C++ does to avoid segmentation faults, and that is to solve computer science problems on Brilliant. Brilliant is a platform to learn STEM interactively online. It has a wide range of courses such as computer science, calculus, algebra, and logic. The courses are very interactive and engaging and they're great for everyday learning and doing these problems on a regular basis will help your logical thinking skills and will also help you recall certain concepts that you might have forgotten over time. 
On top of that, the problems are also very fun to solve. You can start for free at brilliant.org slash csjackie or you can click the link in the description and the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. It is a good deal. Next up, we have JavaScript. JavaScript is a simple guy, but he's very rich. In fact, he has a browser monopoly. He made it very big in life despite dropping out of middle school. JavaScript usually is not the smartest person in the room, but he doesn't realize it. It's his own ignorance that makes him happy because ignorance is bliss. And that is JavaScript's life motto. Now, JavaScript is a dynamically typed programming language. It supports functional, object-oriented, and imperative programming. JS is widely used on client-side web development. All the major browsers have a JavaScript engine that executes code on the client's device. It was created by Brendan Eich of Netscape in 1995, and Netscape was actually one of the first companies to launch a web browser. Now, JavaScript has a younger sister. TypeScript is JavaScript's younger, cuter, smarter sister. But they don't like each other because TypeScript thinks that she's so much better than JavaScript. The thing is, she's not wrong. Although she should stay humble because without JavaScript, she wouldn't exist. Which is a bit weird for a sibling's relationship, but let's not go that way. One thing about TypeScript is that she's very underrated. She's much more capable than people realize. And you know, she's cute, but she might break your neck if you're not careful. I'm gonna tell you a little secret about her. TypeScript's favorite hobby is to read fanfiction. Now, TypeScript is a programming language, but technically it is a superset of JavaScript. It was developed by Microsoft in 2012. TypeScript allows for optional static typing and it transpiles into JavaScript code. So this is all I have for you guys for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave it a like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below whether you agree with the personalities that I created or if you have other ideas for them. All languages are great. All languages have their purpose and I don't mean to offend any of them. This is just something that I did for fun and I hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye.